If you are visiting Arches National Park, here are the 10 things that you don't want to miss on your first visit. My name is Ash, I'm a former park ranger and the founder of Dirt In My Shoes, and I love Arches National Park. I'm a Utah native, I'm in Arches a lot, typically uh, one to two times a year, so I know the park really well. I've done pretty much everything there is to do in this park, and so now I want to talk you through the 10 things that I think you shouldn't miss on your first visit to Arches National Park. Let's get started. Number one, balanced rock. Arches National Park has a lot of arches, but there are also some other things that you can do that are not arches. We'll get to those arches here in a minute, but the first thing that you shouldn't miss on your first visit to arches is balanced rock. Balanced rock is a basically just a massive rock on a pedestal. It looks like it's going to fall over. It's a natural uh, formation but it does look like just this giant rock is about to fall off its pedestal at any time. And so it's a really fun stop, it's a quick stop, and it's one of the first things that you'll see as you're entering Arches National Park. You can walk around Balanced Rock. There's a short 0.3 mile round trip trail that travels around the rock. It's an accessible trail, it's really good for wheelchairs, it's good for young children, it's good if you have a stroller, and so this is a really nice one to get out, stretch your legs, and see something unique. If you're wanting to get to Balanced Rock, you'll start here at the entrance station, travel the park road, and you'll hit Balanced Rock right here. Arches is a relatively small national park. It really only has the one road going through it, and so that makes it really easy to get to a lot of things in a short amount of time. And so you'll be driving right past Balanced Rock as you're exploring the park, and it's a great stop to get out and explore something. Number two, the windows. So the windows is two different arches, and they're right next to each other, um, kind of carved out of the same rock. And so it does look like you're looking through the window pane um, to see the beautiful mountains and the desert views on the other side of the arches. So I really love this area. Um, this area is really unique because you've got actually um, five massive arches in this area. You've got double arch, which is two arches that are connected. You've got the windows and then you've got turret arch. And so uh, this area is perfect for you just park, you get out, explore, you can see a bunch of different natural arches and they're all massive and it's just a really cool area to get out and see. So from the front side, the two arches are called the windows. When you hike around the back side, if you want to do that hike, you don't have to. It is a short hike if you just want to walk up to the base of the front of the windows and turret arch as well is just right there. If you want to hike around to the back, then that's when they're called the spectacles. They look a little bit more like glasses from that side. I do find that to be a little bit confusing, but you may hear it called by both names. And so that's why I wanted to point that out. I really enjoy hiking the whole loop. As you go around the back side of the windows, it does get a little bit quieter. I really love being in this area at sunrise or sunset. It's just fantastic the way the light hits the rocks. It's also a really great area to be at for some night photography or for some stargazing. And so this is just a really great area to explore. I really love being here. What's so nice about arches is that um, a lot of the arches are relatively easy to get to. And so this is a great park if you um, are in a wheelchair or if you're hiking with kids or if you don't typically hike but you wanna get out and explore. Uh, because for example, in this windows area, you can get out and you can just walk a few steps to get up closer to the windows if you want. Um, you can walk a few steps to get over to Double Arch, which is in the same parking area here, and we'll talk about that arch in a minute. But uh, it's really nice because you can park, you can see the arches uh, pretty much from the parking area. You can get closer if you want. Uh, and then there's also the option to keep hiking around the windows if you want to lose some of the crowds or do some more typical hiking on like a dirt path. So uh, this area is just really great for that and it's really great again for a nice easy stroll to see something super cool. To get to the windows you'll start here at the visitor center and entrance station, travel the park road up here, you'll pass Balance Rock and then you'll want to take a right and then you'll take this road all the way to the end and this little loop here is the parking area. You can park anywhere along this loop 
and have easy access to both windows, the turret arch and double arch. Number three, Devil's Garden. Devil's Garden is easily my favorite hiking trail in the park. It is phenomenal. You'll see eight different arches as you hike along this trail and it is a longer trail. And so if you're wanting to really get out and explore Arches National Park, if you're wanting to lose some of the crowds, if you're wanting to see something or uh, be by yourself, find some solitude and enjoy some gorgeous views without all the people, then the Devil's Garden is the perfect place to go. So the entire Devil's Garden Trail is 7.2 miles round trip and it does get challenging, especially as you pass double O arch and you're getting into the really primitive part of the trail. That's where you'll have to do a little bit of rock scrambling. You will find some pools of water that you may have to go around or navigate around. And so it is a very fun and adventurous hike, especially if you really love to hike. But you actually don't have to hike the whole trail if you don't want to. It's really easy to break it into sections. And so a lot of people you'll find will just hike the first part of the Devil's Garden, which takes you to Landscape Arch. And that's a really famous arch that we'll talk about here in a minute as well. And a lot of people just turn around there. So your first part of the Devil's Garden hike is going to be quite busy. But once you get past Landscape Arch, if you decide to continue, then that's when it starts to get a lot quieter and you won't see as many people and you'll see some of the coolest arches in the park. I highly recommend hiking the whole thing if you can, but if you can't, then it's easy to break up into shorter portions so that you can still have a great experience. If you're wanting to get more information about this trail, I highly recommend clicking over to dirtinmyshoes.com. I have a full trail guide that just walks you through everything to expect and shows you pictures of all the things that you'll see in the Devil's Garden. To get to the Devil's Garden, you'll start down here at the entrance station. You'll drive the entire park road all the way to the very end, and that's where you'll find the Devil's Garden trailhead. Number four, Courthouse Wash Rock Art. So anytime I have a chance to see anything that is historic Native American petroglyphs, pictographs, um, any buildings, anything like that, I'm just so excited to do that. So I get really excited about this. I love seeing the Native American rock art and the courthouse wash area. You can find some really good pictographs. A lot of people don't know about this area, but basically what you'll do is you'll park and you'll walk kind of along the road, the main road that goes into Moab, the town right there. And you'll go up into the cliffs and you'll find these beautiful pictographs. This trail is only one mile round trip. Uh, pets are not permitted, but it is a nice trail to do if you're looking for some Native American art. And you will wanna pay careful attention to the driving directions for this particular stop. You can find those on dirtinmyshoes.com and I'll link them below the video. But uh, you'll wanna go there and really read through these driving directions because it is kind of confusing, not very well marked, and a lot of people don't even know that this rock art is here. And so that's what makes it really fun stop is that it's something unique, it's something beautiful, and it's something that's a little bit secret. To get to the courthouse wash rock art, so you'll actually not even enter the main park entrance here, but you'll follow this highway right here, Highway 191, You'll park right here and then you'll walk over to the rock art that is right here. Number five, double arch. Double arch is one of my favorite arches to see in arches. I love it. I just think it's so fantastic that the wind and the water was able to carve such a beautiful, huge double arch in this national park. So you've got the two arches right here and they're carved out of the same slab of rock and so they kind of meet up and you can climb down underneath. It's kind of hard to tell in these pictures but these arches are massive and they're actually the tallest arches in the park and so that's just super cool that you can walk right there, you can go right to the base of them and then you can climb up to get a closer look if you want. What's nice is that the trail to double arch is really short. It's mostly flat. It is good for hikers of all ages and abilities. And so that's really nice. It's only a half a mile round trip. So definitely get to double arch it is one of the most impressive arches in the national park. To get to double arch, you'll enter through the main park entrance. You'll drive down here past Balance Rock, take a right, down this side road here and at the very end is your parking area for double arch 
and you'll notice that this is where the windows are, this is where turret arch is, and this is where double arch is, so you can just park in this one parking lot to get to all of those arches. Number six, the fiery furnace. The fiery furnace is a really unique part of arches uh, in a park that's already full of really unique stuff. It's just super cool to be able to explore in the fiery furnace. So basically what the fiery furnace is, is just a huge maze-like area that just has lots of big red rock fins. And those fins are what the arches are typically carved out of. So you've got those, you've got arches that you can see, you've got some slot canyons. Uh, there's a lot of climbing and a lot of maneuvering uh, through this area. So it's just a really fun adventure and a really cool place to explore. The thing about the fiery furnace is that most people will need to take a guided ranger hike through this area and you will need to purchase tickets to do so. Those tickets go really fast. It's very competitive to get those tickets. A lot of people want to do this hike and so you'll definitely want to plan in advance for that. If you do decide to do this, then you will need to be in decent shape. You'll need to be able to be climbing around things and navigating through this area for about three hours. So keep that in mind, but if you're able to do it, it really is worth all the effort to get those tickets and to go into the fiery furnace. If you're a complete pro at navigating through the parks, if you're very experienced in route finding and in hiking, then you can get a permit to do a self-guided tour of the fiery furnace. Those are also extremely competitive. And so basically to get into this area, you will need to do some advanced planning and you will need to be prepared to get a reservation of some type. You'll also want to note because of the difficulty, children under the age of five and pets are not permitted in the fiery furnace. So do keep that in mind. But again, it is worth the effort. If you're able to get in there, it is beautiful and very much a fun adventure in Arches National Park. To get to the fiery furnace, you'll enter the park here and you'll drive the park road up past Balanced Rock, up past that turn off there, and you'll get to the fiery furnace right here. They do have a ranger at that parking area checking for permits and making sure that you have what you need to go into the fiery furnace. And so don't try to sneak in there, don't try to get in there unless you have a reservation. Number seven, Courthouse Towers Viewpoint. So this is another area of arches that is a non-arch stop, and so you won't see arches from here, but there are some really cool rock formations that you will see. So I like to just stop here for a couple of minutes and take a look around, get some good pictures. You can see landmarks like the Oregon, the Three Gossips, Sheep Rock, the Tower of Babel. So it's a really fun stop just to get a really good idea of the massive rocks that are in this area that a lot of arches start to be formed out of. So it's really fun to stop here just for a few minutes and to get some unique photos of your time in arches. To get to the Courthouse Towers viewpoint, you'll just enter the park here and drive the park road for a few miles to get to Courthouse Towers viewpoint right here. You'll also notice that this is the end of the Park Avenue Trail, and so you can park here and hike the Park Avenue Trail as well if you'd rather not leave from here. That's a really good option if Park Avenue is super busy. Number eight, Landscape Arch. Landscape Arch is the longest arch in the National Park, and you'll notice as you look at it, it's getting a little thin. Uh, that's because those erosive powers are still at work here. You'll be able to see um, some debris below this arch where you can see that a chunk actually fell off. And uh, so at this time, you can hike, you can get relatively close to it, but you're not able to go underneath it uh, due to safety reasons. But I love visiting Landscape Arch because it is just so long and massive. It looks like it could crack apart at any time and it's just a really good reminder of what's happening in Arches National Park, how these arches are being formed and how they are being destroyed by the same erosive powers. And so it's just a really cool area of the park to visit and you'll definitely wanna stop here to see the longest arch in the park. The Trail to Landscape Arch is part of the Devil's Garden Trail. It is one of the most busy and popular trails in the park. And you'll definitely want to time this right so that you're not getting stuck in traffic and so that you're not having a hard time finding parking. So if you need any help with that, you can click on over to Dirt in My Shoes and check out the Arches itinerary where I will help you navigate through these busy areas of the park. 
so that you're able to see things in the best possible way. The Trail to Landscape Arch is 1.6 miles round trip. It's relatively flat and so it makes for a really good hiking trail especially if you have younger kids with you and it's just one of those stops that you'll definitely want to see while you're in the park to get to landscape arch you'll enter the park down here and drive the whole park road to the very end you'll park here at the devil's garden trailhead and then just walk a portion of the devil's garden trail to get to landscape arch you'll also pass by a couple other arches along the way and as I said earlier, when I was talking about Devil's Garden, this is a great turnaround point if you just wanna to go to Landscape Arch and back. But if you're looking for a longer trail, if you're wanting to see more arches and find a little bit more solitude, then I definitely recommend continuing on the Devil's Garden Trail and exploring the area further. Number nine, Park Avenue. Park Avenue is another non-arch stop in Arches National Park. It's a beautiful hiking trail where you'll dip down into a little canyon and then you'll have those towering rocks on both sides of you. This is also a really fun area to visit if you're hoping to see some bighorn sheep or some other native wildlife. And uh, I haven't had much luck seeing anything here, but uh, they do like to hang around this area if you're lucky. So. Uh, definitely stop at Park Avenue and hike the trail here. This hike is two miles round trip. It can be made shorter and I'll show you on the map how to do so. Pets are not permitted on this trail or on any other trails and arches, so do keep that in mind. If you're wanting to hike Park Avenue, then you'll enter the park here and it's a really short drive here. Park Avenue is pretty much the first thing of note that you'll reach as you enter the park. And so what you can do is you can park here at the Park Avenue viewpoint and you can walk out and get a really nice view of Park Avenue from above if you just wanna to go to the viewpoint and back. If you wanna keep hiking, then you can drop down from the viewpoint, go down into the canyon and hike along this trail here. Now, this trail comes out at Courthouse Towers and so at that point, if your car is still at Park Avenue, you'll just need to turn around and come back out the same way you came. If you have somebody else with you, if you're traveling in a group, then you could potentially have somebody park at Courthouse Towers and then somebody park at Park Avenue and then you would only need to do that route once, cutting the hike time in half, so that makes it one mile instead of two. Another option is you could start your hike from the Courthouse Towers viewpoint and work your way up and back. So uh, a few options in this area but definitely at least get out and check out the Park Avenue viewpoint. And then I always recommend hiking, getting some dirt in your shoes and getting down in there to get some different views and to enjoy some solitude. Number 10, Delicate Arch. So I saved the best arch for last. This is the most famous arch in Arches National Park. Uh, it's the one that you'll see on the Utah license plate. It's the one that really represents this iconic national park. So definitely find a way to get to Delicate Arch. Um, I'll outline a few different options for you, but it is the most beautiful, breathtaking, spectacular arch in the park, and you'll definitely want to see it. Okay, so Delicate Arch is really famous. It gets super busy, so you will wanna time it right so that you can get parking at the trailhead and so that you can get some photos without people in them because I've had great luck getting photos without people in them. If you're wanting some help navigating through arches, you can check out the arches itinerary on Dirt in My Shoes and I will help you so that you can get those epic photos of Delicate Arch. So you've got a few different options to see Delicate Arch. The first is to hike the Delicate Arch Trail. And this trail is about three miles round trip. It does have a good incline, but is relatively doable for most people. And so if you hike or if you want to hike, if you can hike, then I definitely recommend checking out the Delicate Arch Trail and making it all the way to the base of the arch. You can find a detailed trail guide on Dirt in My Shoes, so I'll leave that link for you here in the notes for this video, but you'll definitely want to try to get there if you can. Another option is that there is a viewpoint that you can drive to, and so instead of turning into the Wolf Ranch Trailhead where the Delicate Arch Trail starts, you'll just keep going on that road to the end, and there are a couple of viewpoints there that you can walk to. 
These viewpoints don't give you very close to the arch, so you won't be standing like right below it. You're about a mile out or so from those viewpoints, but it does still provide the opportunity to see the arch if you're hoping to see it and you're not able to hike. Delicate Arch is especially beautiful at sunrise or sunset. Uh, you'll find a lot of people there at sunset because the light hits the arch really beautifully. But if you're looking for less crowds and an easier time getting parking, then you may want to also consider sunrise. Uh, it's beautiful there as well. To get to Delicate Arch, you'll enter the park right here, drive along the park road. And as you pass Balance Rock, you'll pass a few little turnoffs, but then you'll be looking for the Wolf Ranch Trailhead or Delicate Arch viewpoints. You'll see the sign there and you'll want to take a right. To hike to Delicate Arch, then you'll park here at Wolf Ranch and you'll take the trail up here to Delicate Arch. If you won't be hiking the trail, then you'll just continue along this road down here where you can then park to see the Lower Delicate Arch or the Upper Delicate Arch viewpoints. So either way, whether you want to hike or not, definitely at least drive down here and make sure that you see Delicate Arch while you're here. And there you go, the 10 things that you absolutely don't want to miss on your first visit to Arches. Uh, there are so many things to do in this area. Arches National Park is relatively small, but it is a great family-friendly destination if you're hoping to see something cool, get out and hike a little bit, and enjoy the beauty of nature around you. The town of Moab also has a lot of different options. Uh, if you want to go hiking, climbing, biking, uh, jeeping, <laughs> there's so many things you can do in this area. You've also got Canyonlands National Park right there. So uh, definitely plan a good amount of time when you visit Arches National Park. If you need any help with your trip planning, click on over to Dirt in My Shoes. I have everything you need to make your trip perfect. I hope you have a great time. And don't forget to get some dirt in your shoes.